to bring clothes in. If parents um, cannot bring something in, then students will be sent to ISS until clothes are brought in. So again, we're going to be holding students accountable, so make sure that you please follow that. If you have any questions about this or anything else, I will be around after the presentation, so please feel free um, to ask me, okay? Um, next up, we have Mr. Tun, who's going to talk to you a little bit about athletics.
Okay, I'm Dan McKibben. I'm the guidance counselor for the middle school and high school. So, uh, sorry for guys like this. He gets me for middle school and high school, so sorry about that. Um, my first thing I want to talk about is schedules. And what I have up here is a typical schedule for a person that is not in band. And if you notice the top, if you see the CFS on the left, that's the class. Parents, that was home ec when we were in school. Now it's consumer and family science. So right now, you guys that have Q1 right now, that's all you have to pay attention to first hour. Because seventh grade is going through their rotation classes every nine weeks. Okay? So every nine weeks it'll change. So if you hate CFS, good news is you got choir next. Okay? So this person has CFS the first nine weeks, second nine weeks choir, third nine weeks art seven, and fourth nine weeks PE and health. And for PE and health, the health part will be first. And the PE part, other way around. Okay, so it'll be basically health. And really, as eighth graders, you'll probably have a health class too. And then in high school, you have to take health and two PE classes. Okay, so the rest of the day, so what you guys really need to pay attention when I meet with people and I talk to them about the schedule, the only things you really need, the only thing you really need to worry about right now is the first quarter, so Q1 for first hour, and then S1 for the rest of the year. Okay, see how there's S1 and S2, and really they're the same classes, it's just the computer makes us put it in that way. Okay, and at the end of Mr. Smith's uh, part of his presentation, he's probably hiding, I know I would, uh, he's gonna have, he has a couple student council kids, they're gonna help your students go master the art of finding the locker. I don't know if any parents have the same nightmare that I do, but I still have nightmares of trying to get to my locker, forgetting those combinations, and I have a final exam coming up and I'm not going to get to it on time. Hopefully you don't have that. Okay, so this is a without band, and then this is a band. So people that have signed up for band, you have band all year. So instead of going through those four rotation classes, you will be in band all year. And if you'll notice, that's kind of the basic difference between the... the two schedules. Any questions about the schedule? All right. Yeah, I should have put that slider in there. Okay. Honor roll. There's three different honor rolls in middle school. There's principal's honor roll, which means you have nothing but A's, straight A's. You can have A minuses, but it's straight A's. Okay. And honor rolls are every nine weeks. And then at semester time, we also have a semester honor roll. And just so you know, now that you're in high school, semester grades take precedence over nine week grades. Okay? So for like Mr. Tun was talking about eligibility, if you have better grades for the semester than the nine weeks, that's what we use to determine eligibility. Okay? So we have the principal's honor roll, which is straight A's. We have A honor roll, which is a 3.67. GPA or above, and you can have Bs, okay? And then the third one is B honor roll, and you have to have a 2.67. All the, the GPA and stuff is in your handbook, but actually a 3.67 equals an A minus exactly. That's, what, that's what's computed for that grade. And then a 2.67 is a B minus exactly, okay? Uh, grades and grading periods, we just kind of talked about that for the nine weeks. Uh, work permits. Does anybody know how old you have to be to get a work permit? Let me see again. 14, who said that? You are correct. When your child is 14, they are eligible for a work permit. However, as eligible as the golden rule, they must be eligible to receive a work permit. Okay? And then at the end of that grading period, they can be eligible. Let's say they get the one of the two Fs, at the end of the next training period, if they clean that up and improve that, then they can get their work permit. Okay? Success is the last period of the day. It's 30 minutes. Your classes are going to be about 45 minutes long. Okay? And then the exception is at the end of the day, success is 30 minutes long. And what is success? You people that have high school know what I'm talking about, but it's basically what I tell people. It's a combination of homeroom and study hall. So... I know a lot of you guys love homework and really look forward to doing it every night, but there's a chance of you getting at least some of it done. And then also, the other thing you can do during success is 
I know nobody in here struggles with math like I did in high school. No, I, I didn't, did I? No, I did. I did fine. Okay. Let's say you have trouble with math. You can get a pass from that teacher for success and go talk to them that last half hour of the day and get a little extra help instead of paying for it. Either. Okay? Any questions about all that? All right. Mr. Smith. And then I, I had one more thing about schedules. Um, there, there really is no changing of the schedules unless you signed up for a band and you didn't want to or the other way around. So if there's should have been a band and you're not, or you should have been not in band and you are. So you can just let me know that. All right, Mr. Smith? I'm trying to keep my comments brief. I know some of you are probably dancing when I get out here. I'm trying to be brief because I can't. I know I am. Yeah. Um, some of you have already received an email from, from me. Um, I am one of the things I do here at the middle school is I'm in charge of the homework email system. For those of you that had students in the middle school in the last few years, you're very familiar with that already. Every night I compile a list of the assignments from the core teachers, your math, your science, your social studies, your language arts, and send them home to parents. So that way you know what's going on every single night. So they cannot come home and say, well, I didn't have anything today. And you're going to say, well, I thought you had this and this and this. So it really helps us with the communication and helping keep your students on the straight and narrow. I have already 35 families in the seventh grade that have signed up. Um, I tried to email everybody that was in the system, uh, but I know when I send a message to 50 or 60 people at a time, sometimes they go into spam and get totally missed. So uh, if you did not get signed up for that system, didn't get a message from me, please feel free to stop by and see me afterwards, or you can send me an email, and I will get you signed up for that. We will send the first one on Friday this week. Um, which will probably be more serving as a test than anything else, because really I would expect the only homework on Friday this week to be probably looking at rules and signing. Um, second thing I do here in the middle school is I'm also in charge of taking care of seventh grade grades and reviewing them. One of the things we do here in seventh grade that's a little bit different from some of the upper grade levels, if you've never had a seventh grader, we look through your grades every three weeks and send home grades as need be. The criterion for that for us to help us save on paper and a little bit of process here is if you're not looking at power school, because we can see that, and if you have grades less than a C. So uh, you will get that message, but again, if you are looking at power school, you won't see anything from me regardless of the grade. Mm -hmm. um, it's really to help keep the kids on track. Um, um, that really, I hope, helps you out. Uh, we will email as many of those home as I can. I know not everybody has email. If you do not have an email address in the system, uh, they will be mailed home. Uh, we try and cut down on the mail as much as possible. Um, and of course, you would not get one at the nine week mark because that's the report card time. And then the third thing I'm uh, responsible for is our student mentoring program. Um, you will all be assigned, each seventh grader is assigned a group of people they'll work with and a uh, upperclassman, uh, a sophomore, junior, or senior mentor to work with. And they will cover some of the different things that they will struggle with undoubtedly in middle school, whether that be studying or homework or relationships or a myriad of topics we cover. Um, I'm very proud to have three of my mentors here tonight. You'll be meeting these people very formally next week when we have our first session, but right now they're here tonight to help you with lockers and take care of those types of responsibilities. Um, if you guys could please come up here a little bit. I know you probably don't want to be right in front of the crowd, but I'm going to point you out anyway. Um, this is Nick Haynes, Natalia Cody, and Jamie Lowenthal, uh, who was 
three of my mentors, there's probably going to be about ten of them all together, and you'll be working with them in some groups of your classmates um, in some of these issues. I am, and the school is, very proud of these young people. And I hope that when you become upperclassmen, you will be the people that are up here doing this, helping out the people that are starting in middle school. It is of utmost importance to me. We've done this now four or five years. Jamie's sister even was a mentor, so we even have lineage as a mentor going on already <laughs> in a short amount of time. Um, we are so very proud of these young people, and I really hope by the time you get there, you will be up here as well. Um, tonight, they are here to help you once we let you go here in a little bit. They will be out in the hallway with me, helping you with lockers and whatever you might need. Um, hopefully, we won't have any problems. But if we do, we'll resolve them as quickly as we can so you're all ready for Friday as a first day. Um, one thing I like to say, sometimes I say this for the first day of school, but I think it's important to say, and this might sound a little rough around the edges, but to us right now, what we know of you is mostly on paper. We can see a grade. We can see a comment. But we really don't know much about you yet. So if you don't like the things you've done in the past, maybe your grades weren't quite the best. This is your opportunity, seventh graders, to change that. This is a new chapter in the book for you. You can do anything you want. If you don't like maybe the low grades that you had, this is the opportunity to start new. We don't have any preconceived notions. If your behaviors weren't quite perfect, this is the chance for you to become someone new in that area. Please take that opportunity. Please avail yourselves of whatever help you need from us. Please avail yourselves of your student mentor. We expect great things, and you have that opportunity. It's rare in your life you get a chance to start fresh. This is one of those times. If you need it, take that opportunity. If you've been rocking and rolling through elementary school, Keep on rocking and rolling. It's going to be a great year. Thank you. You want to see this now, too? Greetings, everyone. Mr. Piper here, and today I'm going to show you how to open up a locker. The first thing you want to do when you look at your locker combination is you want to start your lock at zero. Then look at the first number in your combination. In this case, the first number is 42. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the lock all the way around, past 42 once, past 0, and then back to 42. Watch as I do it. Turning to the right, there I'm passing 42, passing 0, back to right there, 42. The second number in this combination is 18. Now I'm going to do the same thing except turning the lock to the left. I'm going to pass 0, I'm going to pass 18 once, and then I'm going to land on 18 again. So let's give it a try. Pass 0, pass 18 once, and then back there to 18. The last number in this combination is 14. So what you're going to do there is you're just simply going to turn the lock to the right to get back to number 14. This time you don't have to pass 0, you don't have to pass the number once. There we go, 14. and. Voila! Your locker is open. Ryan Braun congratulates you. Hope you learned something new today about opening a locker. Goodbye for now.